morning, everyone. We are going to be continuing the 33 days to morning glory. And today we are going to be talking about Blessed Mother Teresa. Three words summarize what we learned from Blessed Mother Teresa. One, thirst. Two, heart. And three, covenant. Let's ponder each one in turn. Thirst. Our Lady was the first person to hear Jesus' cry, I thirst, with St. John, and I am sure Mary Magdalene. Because Our Lady was there on Calvary, she knows how real, how deep is his longing for you and for the poor. Do we know? Do we feel as she? Ask her to teach. Her role is bringing face to face, as John and Magdalene, with the love and the heart of Jesus crucified. Before, it was Our Lady pleading with Mother. Now, it is Mother in her name pleading with you. Listen to Jesus' thirst. Let us try in a special way to come as close as a human heart can come to the heart of Jesus and try to understand as much as possible Jesus' terrible pain caused to him by our sins and his thirst for our love. Thank God Our Lady was there to understand fully the thirst of Jesus for love. She must have straight away said, I say to you your thirst with my love and the suffering of my heart. So let us ask Our Lady to help us understand. Heart. A key to Mother Teresa's understanding of consecration is heart, specifically the Immaculate Heart. Recall her two prayers to Mary. Lend me your heart, and keep me in your most pure heart. Also recall the importance of our imitating Mary's pondering heart. Let's start with the two prayers, and then review Mary's heart-pondering attitude. Lend me your heart. By this prayer, Mother Teresa was asking Our Lady to give her the love of her heart. In other words, she says, Mary, help me to love with the perfect love of your Immaculate Heart. Remember, Mother Teresa's passionate desire was to satiate the thirst of Jesus for love, and she wanted to do this in the best possible way. What better way to love Jesus than with a perfect, humble, immaculate heart of his mother? Here, Mother Teresa found the secret to living out her vocation to the full. Mary, lend me your immaculate heart. Keep me in your most pure heart, or, stated more fully, one prays, Immaculate Heart of Mary, keep me in your most pure heart, so that I may please Jesus through you, in you, and with you. This part of Mother Teresa's consecration to Mary is the most profound. She's not just asking for Mary's heart to be in her, but for her to be in Mary's heart. So. This is a prayer to love Jesus through Mary, in Mary and with Mary. This is something more than simply having Mary lend us her heart. To understand this and live it requires a loving dependence and profound union with Mary. This is expressed more fully in the next section, Covenant. Pondering heart, Mother Teresa developed an attitude of gratitude by following the example of Mary who was always pondering in her heart the good things that God was doing in her life. See Luke 2, 19, 51. Specifically, Mother Teresa followed this example through her fidelity to the examination of conscience. In other words, at the end of each day, she would ponder in her heart all the good things God has done for her that day and would reflect on how she was or was not fully responding to his love. Covenant, moved by an ardent desire to live in the closest union with you, Mary, possible in this life, so as to more surely and fully arrive at the union with your Son, I hereby pledge to live the Spirit and terms of the following covenant of consecration as faithfully and generously as I am able. Mary's duties. One, to give of her spirit and heart my duties one total gift of all I have and am. To possess, protect, and transform me. 
total dependence on Him, to inspire, guide, and enlighten me, responsiveness to your spirit, to share your experience of prayer and grace, faithfulness to prayer, responsibility for my sanctification, trust in your intercession, responsibility for all that befalls me, accept all as coming from her, to share me with your virtues, imitate your spirit, to provide for my spiritual and material needs, constant recourse to her, union with your heart, remembrance of her presence, to purify me and my actions, purity of intention, self-denial, right to dispose of me of my prayers and intercessions and graces, right to avail myself of her and her energies for the sake of the kingdom, total freedom in and around me as she pleases in all things, right to enter into her heart to share her interior life. Today's prayer, spend the day pondering Teresa's Marian teaching as it is summarized by these three words, thirst, heart, and covenant. Welcome to St. Bernadette's Missionary Discipleship Academy. Today is the 23rd Sunday in ordinary time. Please air by, wave, or smile to begin. We 
ask that you please silence your phone and your heart to celebrate the sacred energy. Today's second collection is for Captain University of America. Our Sunday readings, God makes no distinctions between rich and poor. All are invited to be heirs of the kingdom. And our celebrant is Father John Peter. Please stand.
God, by whom we are redeemed, and receive adoption. Look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom, and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated. In this Mass, we continue to pray for the end of this pandemic and for the healing of the world, especially for the East Coast and all people who were affected by the hurricane Ida. And also, we pray for California and all the places where they inspired the evacuations. May the Lord God bless all those people as they are restoring their health and well being. We also pray for the faithful departed, especially Richard Mayo. May he receive eternal rest in heaven. We also pray for special intentions of Romero in our family, especially for baby Israel and Rick, that the Lord may touch his heart with good health. Reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, thus says the Lord, Say to those whose hearts are frightened, Be strong, fear not. Here is your God, who comes with vindication, with divine recompense, who comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag, then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert, and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. Sit here, please. 
while you say to the poor one, Stand there, or sit at my feet? Have you not made distinctions among yourselves, and become judges with evil designs? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, did not God choose those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he promised to those who love him? The word of the Lord. When people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment, he begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and spitting touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, A father, that is, be open. And immediately the man's ears were open. His speech impediment was removed and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed him. They were exceedingly astonished and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. I want to thank you and welcome you all again to this Eucharistic celebration on the 23rd Sunday of Ordinary Time. And today I want to begin the reflection from the Gospel reading where Jesus uses the words to heal and to bring back or restore the hearing power that every man and woman or every creature on earth that needs. Be open, your Father. What needs to be open today? And of course, the healing power of God is something very special that we need to meditate on. Maybe it's a good time for us to redefine or to understand what is miracle. Whether you are a believer or whether you are a non-believer or even atheist or anybody who still has belief on miracles. They got no problem using the words miracle because they all say miracle is an event, it's an extraordinary thing that has happened to someone which does not have a scientific expression or explanation. You see, see, little by little, I explained, right? It's an event, it's a reality which is extraordinary, which doesn't even have a scientific base to explain or to understand it is beyond our human capacity, we call it miracle. For you and me as a believer, we immediately say, thank you Lord. Because that is not something ordinary, that is of course extraordinary, that is not of human, but it is divine. We are easily relating to God and God's presence. Sometimes we seek for miracles. 
miracles that we always, always ask for is complete healing. Immediately, instant healing. My brother is sick, my sister is sick, my grandma is sick, or my uncle is sick. This is happening, that is happening. Lord God, we want you to relieve us, deliver us, set us free. And when that happens, of course that happens, and we, we are so happy, we are excited when that happens. When that does not happen, we are sad. We, our belief on miracle is kind of a little bit, you know, shaky. But of course God does miracles. That's a, one of the type of miracles that God completely heals. Number two is very important. As spiritual leaders, as people of God, we all need to invite this. The healing, the miracle is in all moments of joy and sorrows, in moments that we can bear the pain, we cannot bear the pain. We have the courage, we gather the strength from the fountain of the living water, the altar and the crucifix. Not because it is easy, not because it is comfortable, because we know that our Lord God will not abandon us even at this most difficult time. So I will endure it, I will fight it. That's again another miracle. In moment of sickness, in moment of failures, in moment of denial, you know, all these things can very well, you know, remind us about the miracle that God has put into our hearts. I, I always remember ever since this uh, little uh, you know, band was given to me, don't give up, never give up. It's such a very uh, difficult situation that the family is going through. That's what they decided to give it to every family member to fight for their loved ones. Never give up. And God will not allow you to give up. He will always provide you strength. That's again another miracle. Sisters and brothers, I opened up the saying from the gospel. Jesus used the words to heal the uh, man, uh, man, man uh, the deaf man. He said, "Your father, be open." One of the theologians used to say, "Every man and woman, or any human being for that matter, should not be valued for what they have. They should be valued." For who they are. I'll repeat that again. That, that deeply goes into the first reading. Every person should be valued for who they are, not for what they have. Because what you have, maybe your money, your education, your qualification, all these things, it might be taken away, it might be gone. If you're going to respect that person for that, You won't be able to respect the real person. Each one of us, a child of God, that's the most important thing that we need to respect and honor. Be open. Be open to respect and honor the person of God living in each person. Once again, you know, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, today is her feast. Today we celebrate her death anniversary. And so we ask the Lord for blessing of mercy through her. And she reminds, like St. James, the second reading that we heard today, talking about the poor. And she says like that, It is the poor that gives me reason and purpose to love God. It is through them I am able to identify. I see the suffering soul of Christ in them. When I serve them, I serve God. I saw it thank the poor for helping me to serve God through the poor. If it is not for the poor, I wouldn't have work. That's how she says. Sisters and brothers, we are called to open our heart. Open our mind. We have a beautiful hymn in the Catholic Church. Open our hearts, O Lord. Open our ears, O Lord. Open our eyes, O Lord. So that we might be able to see you, so that we might be able to hear you, so that we might be able to speak your word. Today we are also we are asking for the grace to be open, but we also have to ask the question: What are we doing with the gift of the God?
God given gift of hearing that we have, the listening gift that God has. Most of the time, the problem in the family is, you know, husband and wife having a dialogue. Even before the wife finishes the sentence, the husband completes it. Or the husband, you know, not even started, but the wife completes it. The huge problem that the families are going through it is the famine of shortness of listening. People like me like to speak when it comes to matter of listening, it is so hard. And I'm not alone, I know that. But I got a lot of company. We have a problem. Even we listen, we are shocked. Rapida rapida, andale andale, right now, immediately. Quick, make a quick sentence. In two words, one word. That's how we give him time to listen. You know, Jesus saw the deaf man. He could, have, he could have said, go, your ears are open, go, you'll hear well. He could have said it, but he didn't say it. He took it apart. He took him to the side and he touched him. Touch and heal, and he came, he said, Your Father, be open. A child who was born deaf, the mother and the father was devastated because the child could not hear. It's already three years old. So they were finding ways and means, the doctors could help. Finally, hearing aid was fixed into the ears of the child. As soon as the child started hearing the voices, the child went crazy and smiling and yelling and laughing. You know, until then, they did not tell anyone about this problem of the child. But some of the people who came into the house, what is happening? Your child is so excited, so happy. What is happening? Is it something wrong? Things like that. No, 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 my child is fine. Finally, they had the courage to tell, well, in three years, our child has not heard anything. She has not heard mama or papa. And she has not heard anything. It's the first day she hears. So she's so joyful. And so we are also happy. Sometimes we forget the beautiful gift that God has given to us. We only feel sorry when we lose it. Talk about those who are hard of hearing. Hard of hearing this is. I can't hear well. I can't hear well. It's a huge, huge psychological, emotional, physical, mental problem that I cannot hear well. My question is, we all have the beautiful gift of listening right now. How are we going about listening? How are we going about listening attentively to the cry of your brother and sister? Don't think about somebody in the street. He or she is sitting right next to you. We've got to open our heart and mind. Like Mother Jesus says, it is the poor that revealed to me God's goodness that I'm able to see, that I'm able to hear. So I engage myself in service. So let us not treat people for what they have, but let us treat people for who they are, because each of us are. Child of God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Please stand for the prayer. I believe in one God. Thank you.
Father and the Son is the Lord and Glory of God, who has spoken to the Father. I believe in one holy and happy and apostolic church. I confess my baptism. baptism, God adopts us as beloved sons and daughters. We approach with love and trust in God and we pray for our needs. Not all members of the church will have open ears to hear God and open mouths to bear witness to God's healing presence. We pray to the Lord. Not all nations of the world will act to protect the poor and marginalized. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. Not all in need of physical and mental healing will experience God's restorative presence through caring health professionals. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. That all gathered here who will respond to the needs of the world by living out their baptismal promises in creative ways. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that those whose lives have been disrupted by natural disaster or wildfires may be find the strength and assistance they need to rebuild. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For those in Afghanistan, may the Lord give them strength and hope that they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that those suffering from COVID-19 body, mind, or spirit, experience the healing power of Christ, and may it help them to find comfort and healing. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayers. Pray for our personal intentions. God of healing, you respond to our cries. Make us whole again. You restore our health and love being. Hear these prayers we bring before you in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated.
generously of this wine, we offer you the fruit of the wine, work of human hands, and it will become for us a spiritual thing. Brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery. We may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere we give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought to the devil to humanity's fallen state. By his suffering, cancelled out our sins, and by his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your grace, as without end we are claimed. Thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Myron, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants whom you have called from this world to your son. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like this may also be one with him in the resurrection. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, St. Bernadette of Petronas, St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs in the throne of life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him I pray to be my enemy. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and found by divine teaching, together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said the apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us all pray to the sign of peace. Spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, 
I unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.